we all have to have different options for traveling. And so that's been one of, one of the things that we've been working on. And, and again, you know, I would harken back to what we did in Arizona in some areas. Uh, and it, it is a cultural thing. You, you do have to change the culture of you know, how people move. And, and that's okay, you know, um, you know, we just have to work hard at it. Now, while I was sitting at the table here, uh, I, I, I want to do a quick survey. How many of you watch the TV show Parenthood? Okay. See, see we, we weren't so sure. <laughs> because uh, a very interesting point was made that, you know, I, I thought kind of captured my, my idea. It's, you know, a lot of us are very busy. Uh, some of us probably, if you're going to watch TV, you may only watch certain things. Uh, I like to watch the news, of course, um, and you know, you, you know, you get a filtered view on the news. And I'm a sports fan, so I like to watch sports. And Super Bowl's coming up, so that's going to be fun. Uh, but at the same time, I was raised with, you know, if, if you have to be tuned in to what your constituents are watching and listening. Uh, because if you don't, you may, may be missing what they're, they're being influenced by. And so I thought that was a very good point that you raised, and, and you know, certainly uh, something for all of us to keep in mind. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, I have been the, uh, up until about a month ago, I was the Federal Highway Administrator. I've been with the administration for about four and a half years since uh, July of 09. And I, I, I just have to brag about this one thing. I'm, I really, I'm low-key, I don't like to brag about many things, uh, but this to me was very special. I, I happened to uh, work on the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Obama-Biden transition team. And that to me, coming from Phoenix to Washington, D.C., to help with a, a really significant transition, we believe, in, in the direction of the country, was very special to me. And so uh, that's the only thing we'll brag about today. All the other stuff, we'll talk about business. Um, I've spent a lot of time over the past four and a half years traveling throughout the nation, uh, just taking a look at transportation in general. And I, I've been to a lot of your cities. Uh, you know, we've been to Louisville several times. Uh, when we had some emergency issues there, and we were there uh, pretty quickly, uh, trying to figure out things with uh, the cities, uh, the local community. I know the media, even the media, uh, I rem the, the young guy, you know, he's a young reporter, he actually was friendly. Uh, you, know, you don't see that often from the media. And I think he realized that we were really there in good faith trying to figure out a problem that was pretty significant for, for the city of Louisville and the neighborhood around there. Um, and I remember, I forget the, the young guy's name, you probably know him. Chris Pointer. Yes. Uh, but he actually, uh, I think, recognized that working together in partnership, uh, we were doing some good things. We were really trying, as government, to address the needs of the community. And so he gave us a very, very fair review uh, over the course of uh, replacing or fixing the bridge. Uh, you know, he asked uh, the pointed questions, but he always reported fairly. Uh, when he thought we weren't moving fast enough, he said so. When we were moving quick, uh, he said that as well. And so I think those are the issues that all of us face uh, when we're out there trying to really move forward on transportation. So uh, I've been to a lot of your communities and you know, really taken a look at transportation and what that means. Uh, when we look at transportation on a national basis, um, we believe very strongly that as we recover from you know, the, the, really the bad recession that we had, we know we're still recovering. We're, we're on a really good trend. But as an administration, we're not happy. We think we can do better. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of numbers about uh, how many private sector jobs have been created in the past uh, four and a half years. Uh, but as the administration, we, we want to do better than that. So we believe through transportation, through infrastructure investments, we can create jobs and economic opportunity for, for the local community. Transportation also will help us keep us competitive uh, throughout the, the entire uh, country, well, throughout the entire world. Uh, you know, we, we, I've been very lucky, I, I've had, because I was in Arizona, uh, we did a lot with uh, Mexico and the state of Sonora, that's just south of Arizona. We have a lot of issues that we're dealing with with Canada. And now that I'm at USDOT uh, on the aviation front, you know, it really is a global marketplace. That's where we really connect. Um, you know, quite often, day in and day out, probably minute by minute with the rest of the world. And then, of course, there's maritime. And so we oversee a lot of that at USDOT. So we, 
we have a good sense as to why transportation is so important for the nation. Uh, we know that all of you, um, you know, I think we all know it, there's never enough resources when we need investment. And uh, every city, every state, every local community has a to-do list, and I know each and every one of you probably have your own to-do list. And so um, it's important for all of us to work together to figure out how, as a nation, we can move forward uh, investing in transportation, which in the long run really provides a lot of ec economic opportunity for, for everybody. So we, we want to bring good jobs to your community. <coughs> And we, we understand that you also have to have good partners here in Washington, D.C., so we, we want to be good partners with all of you. Uh, our secretary, uh, Anthony Fox, I still say he's new. You know, he's been on the job probably six or seven months, so he's not that new. Uh, but he's a former mayor, you know, former mayor of Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. And so he understands firsthand uh, what it's like to uh, be at the local level. Uh, and he kind of, you know, I, I, I told him one time, you know, I think he sort of has the same sense that I have. Uh, because when you're at the state level like I used to be, you know, there, there's always room for a study, maybe a plan, but you can't do that forever. At some point you have to deliver <coughs> something. You can't debate forever. And all of you as uh, elected officials know that you will not get reelected or if, if you just keep making promises but never deliver. And, and that's kind of, yeah, I can never imagine going to my former boss, then Governor Napolitano, and saying, yeah, we'll, we'll get that built sometime. It would never work for her or for me. And, and so uh, uh, Secretary Anthony Fox has really the same DNA, if you will. Uh, he wants us to move forward quickly on issues. You know, there's room for discussion about policies and studies and things like that, but he also wants us to show results. And that's what uh, all of you, I think, understand very clearly. So uh, if you can ask for a better advocate than Secretary Fox here in Washington, D.C., um, you know, he, he, he is 100% committed to making sure that all of us succeed, because we understand, just like within our organization, we have 55,000 employees that if each and every employee is successful, we're all going to succeed. And I think when you, when you take that philosophy to the national level, when each and every one of you is successful, the nation will succeed. And so uh, we, we need to work together and make things happen for the country. Just last week, uh, Secretary Fox did in fact lay out his priorities uh, for the department and I had a long discussion with uh, really the national media and a lot of our stakeholders about those priorities. So I want to talk about some of those priorities, uh, just to kind of give you a flavor for uh, the direction we're taking. He talked about um, our, you know, he, he laid out the fact that we all know that there is a deficit in this country. And, and when we say that, traditionally we think about a budget deficit. And we think about the politics <coughs> here in Washington, D.C. of you know, that discussion, the dialogue on the budget deficit. But he goes one step further and he says, you know, the deficit we need to be talking about is the infrastructure deficit. We know that our infrastructure is... Uh, you've heard the president say many, many times that, you know, a lot of our bridges are so old they qualify for Medicare. That's how old our infrastructure is. Uh, and, and if you think about, you know, the dams that are out there, the, the energy investments that we ought to be making, water investments, uh, it's about infrastructure. And it's about how we as a nation, and, you know, I, I like to remind, you know, our employees internally that, you know, yeah, we may have titles and, you know, we, we do certain kind of work each and every day, but we're also <laughs> citizens. And we're affected by the kind of work that we do. So it's important for us that we come together and figure out, you know, in a progressive and positive manner, how do we move forward with uh, addressing our infrastructure deficit? So uh, there, there is good news, uh, we believe, and good movement toward addressing the issue. Uh, we do, however, need to pass a long-term uh, transportation reauthorization bill that will expire at the end of this fiscal year. So at the end of September, uh, MAP 21 will expire. And we also believe that there ought to be a rail bill that gets funded as well. And so I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, President Obama has put forward uh, one big idea on, on a possibility for funding transportation. And uh, he's been talking about uh, corporate tax reform. That's one idea. Are there other ideas? Certainly. And we're open to having that dialogue with Congress. 
So we're looking for others to bring other ideas to the table so we can begin having some serious discussions about what works. Uh, my opinion is that there is no silver bullet. Uh, we are going to have to have, I believe, a menu of options that come together to help solve our issues. Um, many members in Congress are beginning to put some ideas on the table. Uh, from Oregon, uh, Congressman uh, Blumenauer, uh, he laid out a pretty bold uh, idea just uh, last month, I believe. Uh, will that go anywhere? I don't know. But at least congressional members are having that discussion, and that's what's important. But we also um, want to uh, recognize that funding is only part of the conversation. There's something else that all of us need to do, and, and that's being able to use the current resources that we do have in a wise manner. We have to make good investments. We have to make good decisions about those investments. And we believe that we have to get the most we can out of every dollar that we currently have. So uh, if we're going to get more big projects off the ground, and if we're going to attract private investment into making, helping us make those investments, uh, we believe that USDOT has to lead by example. And that's why we're doing everything that we can possibly do to move smarter, faster, and better. At the Federal Highway Administration, uh, about four year, three and a half, four years ago, uh, we launched an innovation initiative that we branded as Everyday Counts. And the reason we called it Everyday Counts is because I was hoping it would lend to our employees and people in the industry an urgency about what we're facing. That every day you come to work and you're serving the American people, every day should count. And so we're looking for creativity and innovation in our industry because we believe that will save communities time and in the long run, time is money, and it will help us save on our resources as well. We did embrace innovation and technology as a new way of doing business, and we encourage a lot of other folks in the industry to do likewise. And uh, I have to tell you, the response has been overwhelming. The communities across the country, and many of them are your communities, have embraced Everyday Counts as an innovation approach uh, so that we can deliver projects not only faster, but also more efficiently. Uh, right here in the district, and we, we call it, oh, that's one thing I learned when I came to D.C., we call it the district. And, you know, the first time or a few times that I heard that, and I finally asked, what district are we talking about? But it's like, oh, it's the District of Columbia. So I, I kind of figured that out. So now I'm calling it the district. Uh, so right here in the district, uh, we, in fact, are uh, using prefabricated bridge elements are replacing the 11th Street Bridge. So you might be wondering, okay, so what's that all about? Uh, ba basically what, what that is, it's one of these creative new ideas uh, where we are able to replace bridges fast and, you know, pretty, pretty fast. Uh, and, and what I like to say about this approach is that basically what we do is you build a lot of your components off-site and then you go <coughs> to the bridge site and replace the bridge. So it's like, think about it like a giant set of Legos. You have the pieces, over a weekend, you tear down a bridge, lay, lay everything back into place, and you have a bridge over a weekend. I've seen that happen time and time again throughout the nation in the past three years. Uh, out here in Boston, just outside of Boston, at Medford, uh, on I-93, uh, it was amazing. They replaced 14 bridges on an interstate over 10 weekends. Not 10 weeks, 10 weekends in one summer. And they, they used a very similar approach. In the past, what we would have done, I think all of you probably have experienced this, you, you would have had a detour for 18 to 24 months, you would have had backups for 18 to 24 months, and you, you would have had a lot of our construction employees in harm's way along with the traveling public. Now you do it over a weekend. Utah has really grabbed a hold of the concept and they've done really well. So across the nation, we're seeing more and more of those creative ideas. The, the Federal Transit Administration, uh, FTA, they've been streamlining their New Starts program. Uh, they, just like everybody else, they want to get those transit programs off the ground and constructed quickly. Uh, they've developed a new tool that is called STOPS, and it cuts the time that it takes for us to do the ridership forecast from what used to be two years to anywhere between a week to two weeks. So again, you know, new ideas, people willing, you know, innovation is about taking a little bit of risk. Uh, but normally, we're, we're in, in our industry, we're very uh, conservative. 
So we don't jump off the cliff. You know, even though it may be risky, it's calculated risk. And so, uh, you know, just taking these simple ideas and actually making them happen and letting others see these things actually happen really uh, helps generate a lot of enthusiasm throughout the nation. We're also uh, answering uh, President Obama's call to do away with red tape. Uh, he has issued several executive orders and presidential memoranda for all, all uh, departments to uh, do whatever we can to minimize rules and regulations. He's been very clear that if you have rules and regulations that are obsolete, that don't work in today's environment, we need to go out there and get rid of those. And, and so there's a process for the administration to also, also do that. We're also using innovative financing solutions like public-private partnerships and our TIFIA loan program. I know a lot of you uh, have actually uh, been applicants and really recipients of, of our TIFIA loan program. Uh, and that's really a great way for us to be able to leverage uh, public sector dollars with private sector dollars. Uh, throughout the history of our program through TIFIA, uh, we have provided $17 billion in credit assistance for projects throughout the past few years uh, that otherwise <coughs> projects wouldn't have been uh, <coughs> anywhere. So the demand for TIFIA is very, very high. Uh, we're also advancing many of many of the other uh, projects throughout the nation. To date, TIFIA has uh, helped 39 major projects get off the ground. Uh, we've invested, uh, what will you take the TIFIA assistance with all the other public and private sector dollars? Uh, we've leveraged more than $55 billion in infrastructure throughout the country. So again, that's another innovative uh, approach to get projects off the ground. Uh, and I know many of you have also been very big fans of our TIGER program. Yeah, you can. I see a few heads nodding. Uh, yeah, we've invested $3.6 billion in 270 innovative projects throughout the nation since uh, 2009. And every state has had at least one project uh, receive a TIGER award. Uh, it's been very, very popular. Uh, the president uh, did sign our appropriations bill a week ago on Friday. And luckily, uh, we have another round of Tiger coming forth. Uh, they approved 600 million under this Tiger round, and, and so we'll be getting that up and running. Uh, as you know, we're looking for multimodal, innovative solutions that that uh, we can uh, uh, hopefully uh, award pro you know projects to. Uh, well, one of the other elements that we're looking at very very closely are what um, the president and the secretary talk about: ladders of opportunity and looking for projects that actually will have elements and criteria that uh, help us connect neighborhoods to jobs, education, health care, and everything else that we do. So we'll continue to look at that. Uh, so, so again, uh, beyond just saying we need more funding, uh, we need more ideas. It's about innovation, changing the way we do business. And I think all of you here are, are big players in that. You need to help us figure out how to move forward help us understand what new ideas we, we may be able to implement. We, we know that uh, a lot of what you're doing, it's just, it's not simply laying out more pavement, more concrete, more tracks. It's bigger than that. It's about connecting communities. It's about creating those ladders of opportunity that I just mentioned. Um, I have to tell you one, one of the things that I believe very strongly in is education. You know, I, I, I tell people, I'm an advocate for transportation, but I'm a true believer in education. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, just from personal experience, I have to tell you that if I didn't have a higher education, I have no idea where I would be. And, and I just know from my experience that you know, education really opened up so many opportunities for me. And so every time that I get a, have an opportunity to talk to uh, the younger generation that's in school, um, I, I always take that opportunity and so I hope all of you join us in that regard as well Matt. I'm sure you do uh, but that that's one, one opportunity we certainly need to be able to provide to um, in, you know, the next generation so uh, we, we need to um, continue working with you and we want to continue working with all of you uh, like I said earlier one of your biggest advocates is a former mayor uh, right here in Washington DC and transportation um, he's asking us to work with the communities even closer than we have in the past. Uh, we want to hear from you how we can do more and how we can do better. 
and we need to continue innovating and, and improving the way we conduct business. Uh, so on a personal note, let me just uh, close by saying that um, at USDOT, safety is, is our highest priority. Um, yeah, I think a lot of you probably heard our, our uh, former Secretary Ray LaHood talk a lot about distracted driving. Uh, Secretary Fox has, has said we're not uh, backing off on that. Uh, we're going to continue to focus on, on safety. Uh, one of his priorities that he has identified within the safety realm is uh, safety for pedestrians and bicyclists. Uh, we know in the past uh, probably a couple of years, uh, numbers on, on death and injury in transportation actually have been trending downward for the past eight years except for uh, motorcycles, bicycles, and pedestrians. Those have, have spiked in the last two years. Uh, we don't know exactly why. I know there are more and more people walking and bicycling. Oh, and by the way, I'm a runner, so joggers are out there, and I've seen my colleagues do some crazy things. Uh, so we, we need to figure out what's really happening so we can find strategies to address that factor. Uh, but when you're out there, I just simply want to say to all of you, uh, we need for all of you to be safe, set the standard, and be a role model. So asking all of you to please buckle up. I can tell you from personal experience, seatbelts really do work. They make a big difference. Uh, want, want to make sure that you put away your cell phones when you're out there driving around. And like I said, um, be careful. Watch out for bicyclists, pedestrians, and runners. Uh, so with that, to help us keep our system safe. And uh, I guess what I would like to do is to say once again, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I guess, are we going to do Q&A? Okay. Uh, so with that, thank you all very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it.